The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. From time to time, we remember saints from the Bible. For instance, John the Baptist, the evangelists who wrote the Gospels, the apostles, and various early disciples. Now and then, we also remember saints from the history of the church, such as those who founded religious orders, those who experienced radical conversions, and those who were persecuted and killed. All of these saints lived lives worth remembering. Sainthood would seem to be a very exclusive club, like the Hall of Fame or a group of lifetime achievement winners. But the communion of saints is actually much larger than just saints formally recognized by the church. John's vision in the book of Revelation, our first reading today, gives an accountable multitude and that gives a good picture of those who are in the presence of the Lord for all eternity. Dear friends, every one of us can aspire to this outcome. The solemnity of all saints, which happens to be our parish feast today, but just because we cannot gather together after mass for a reception, but at least we have different music this weekend. Yesterday we had bells. This morning we had trumpets and uh, violin in addition to the organ. And now we have a quartet of uh, cantors just because we are uplifting our celebration today. Today is the day when the entire church rejoices in the victory of countless multitudes of those holy men and women, most of whom are unknown to us, from all walks of life, of any age, from all nations who have followed and loved God here on earth in their ordinary life till the end and are now enjoying eternal happiness in heaven. It's the day when the church joyfully reminds each one of us that we are called to holiness. Be holy because I, 
the Lord your God, I'm holy. That's what God tells us. The church reminds us that sanctity or holiness is within everyone's reach. I know most of us don't really think about being saints ourselves. We think of saints as people who lived long ago and led lives very different from our own. But in reality, saints are all ordinary people like us who follow the call to holiness. So who are they? They are those who had struggles, temptations, difficulties, problems, perhaps similar to what we have in this life. And they had fought as often as necessary and conquered for the love of Christ. Those are ordinary people who had to struggle against their own disordered passions and tendencies, who had fallen many times but stood up, counting on God's mercy. They are those who had committed errors, sins, sins of pride, laziness, lust, even probably grave sins perhaps, but they repented, sought God's forgiveness in the sacrament of confession, and fought daily against themselves without discouragement and with humility and commitment beginning over and over again as long as it took for love of God. These are the people who knew how to love because they knew how to forget themselves and sacrifice themselves for the love of Christ and of the people around them. They are who, like us, were called by God to be holy without considering themselves as such perfect and holy, but rather sinners in need of God's mercy. Saints, we are people who sought, found, and loved God above anything else in the midst of their ordinary daily activities, carrying out the little things with the great love of God. Those are the saints. My dear friends, the world we live in today is wrought with the temptations to cling to this earth or be jaded by its corruption and ignore the invitation of love. But Jesus shows us another way on this solemnity. In the gospel, we hear his discourse on the mountain when he teaches the Beatitudes. The word Beatitude simply means supreme blessedness or happiness. By giving us the Beatitudes, Jesus is pointing the way to, to the happiness we seek and the life of heaven the saints enjoy. Notice in these Beatitudes that Jesus does not say, blessed are those who simply resist temptation, as important as it is to do so. The blessed whom Jesus speaks of live as his disciples on earth. They are called to have within them the person of Christ so that in their very being they witness to God's love. They are not only tolerant to those who are in need, they show mercy. They not only avoid conflict, they make peace. Dear friends, when the world is darkened by sin, we are called to be a light. When the culture offers worldly pleasures to take possession of us, we are called to follow the King of Kings. Each of the Beatitudes might call to mind a certain saint who exemplified an aspect of holiness. But each Beatitude can also call us to the path of holiness that the saints themselves walked. So, my dear friends, 
inspired by the saints today can be a wonderful day to pick a beatitude and try to live it. Meek, merciful, are you going to hang and thirst for righteousness? Just pick one and try to live it. Which beatitude will bring you a little closer to sainthood today? <laughs>